everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Nicole. If you're new here, I'm a mom to a one-year-old daughter and I share healthy living tips, recipes, what I eat in a days, family vlogs, day in the life videos, all the things. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out a future, on a future video. And I post here every single Wednesday and Friday. So today's video I am so excited for. It's just one of those beginning of the year videos where I just wanna share all of my easy, healthy habits. We are talking about 22 tiny, healthy daily habits for 2022. These are things that you're already doing that you can just add on something really, really tiny to just make it even better. And I know these tips are gonna actually change your life. Some of them just seem so simple when you do them, you're gonna be mind blown on how big of an impact they really have. Especially when you have them all combined all together, they will actually change your life and make you feel so much better and healthier for the new year. So if you are excited, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let's hop right into the video. All right, so we have a lot to go through, so I'm just gonna go right in. The first one is to drink a glass of water as soon as you wake up. So I got my glass here. Every time you wake up, before you do anything else, you can put it on your nightside table, just chug, you don't have to chug, but like drink a glass of water. You probably, if you had a good night's sleep and you don't have a newborn or a toddler that's going through a sleep regression, you probably had a good eight hours sleep. Your body hasn't had any liquids during that time. So make sure you are rehydrating yourself. Get that water into your body first thing in the morning. It is so simple. And if you don't like water, just like, it's a glass of water, just do it. Just do it, your body, your body will thank you for it. All right, we're gonna also get right into it, a squatty potty. I actually don't have one with me. We are currently in Florida, escaping the Canadian winter, but a squatty potty is the best thing ever. You're already using the bathroom in the morning, just order a squatty potty or even find something in your house that is about the same height. It's basically a little stool. You can actually just steal your kitchen stool and make it part of your bathroom decor. And what's great about these little stools is that it actually puts you in the ideal position to eliminate when you go to the bathroom. I have been using one for the last couple of years and I cannot recommend it enough. It will change your morning poops. I mean it, try it out, try it with a stool first and then you can commit and actually get a proper potty squatty or squatty potty. There are so many options. You get ones that fold, so you can just like hide them away when you're not using it. You can get ones that are literally just a stool. Uh, you can also get like cool aesthetic ones like clear acrylic that fit your bathroom decor. Um, so there's lots of fun options now. I'll link them in a blog post. Check the info box down below. But I'm telling you, it makes the biggest difference and you're gonna like only wanna poop with your squatty potty. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm really into things like meditation and positive affirmations. And specifically, I wanna talk about positive affirmations and just positive self-talk. Every single morning when you, after you drink your water and you're getting up for the day, I want you to say three amazing things about yourself. I really like the, I love myself, I love my life, and I'm grateful for X. So right now I will say, I'm grateful for being in Florida, in sunny Florida with my family. And I will actually give myself a hug when I'm saying this. It feels weird when you first start doing it and then it becomes just like a normal thing. And I feel like it just gets into your subconscious mind and actually does something. If you continue to do it every single day, I honestly feel like you will be just like happier about things. Even if you don't believe what it is that you're telling yourself, like I remember, when I was pregnant with Sage, I was so uncomfortable in my first trimester. I was having a really hard time mentally. And then I started telling myself that I love being pregnant. And I, I can't explain it, but what happened later on as my pregnancy progressed, I actually started to really enjoy being pregnant and I never thought that was gonna be a thing. I thought I was just gonna be miserable the whole time and I truly enjoyed it. And I feel like I just kind of tricked my mind into you know just enjoying the experience of growing a baby. Three daily to-dos. I want you to every single day on a notepad or on your phone on digital notes, to write down three things you wanna get done. If you wanna go even further, you can do three personal to-do things and three business. And I feel like at the end of the day, we're running around trying to get all this stuff done, overwhelmed by our to-do list. But if you have three things that you can accomplish in a day and actually check those off, you can look back and go, okay, I did this, I did this, I did this. And you can actually see what you accomplished that day. And you can pick one of the things that's been on your back burner for weeks and get that done that day. So pick three things every single day so you can check them off at the end of the day. My next one is to focus on your breath. You don't have to do a full on 30 minute meditation or even five minute meditation. Just taking even 30 seconds to focus on your breath, deep breath in, deep breath out, 
and maybe repeat that three times and just connect with your breath, whether you are making breakfast, in the shower, um, getting ready in the morning, whatever it is, just take a few moments to just breathe and connect with yourself. And it can honestly make a stressful day really calm and relaxed. And especially if you find like you're waking up in the morning already feeling just like overwhelmed by what you have to do that day, just take a moment to pause breathe and i'm telling you it does wonders i feel like a lot of people are chest breathers which can make you feel more panicky and stressed so really try to focus on that diaphragm like belly breathing and you can watch a guide on youtube i will link one in the blog post there are even apps that you can get for your phone that remind you to just pause throughout your day and take a couple of deep breaths and honestly it makes the biggest difference okay hey, this one i love and it's something that i've been trying to implement more and more and it's the one touch rule so when you walk into the door before you just throw your key somewhere that does not belong i want you to touch it once so if you're going to put it down and it's not the right spot you're gonna have to eventually pick it up again and put it on the key holder or wherever the dish bowl wherever it goes and then you're just like spending more time touching the same thing to put it away so whether it's you know taking something out of the dishwasher or putting something away if you're going to touch something taking off your jacket or something instead of just throwing it on the on the couch i was gonna say on the floor i wouldn't put it past myself so as you're going about your day-to-day -day life just think about the little things that you're doing that you could just be putting it away in the first place that way you're not repeating repeating or touching the same things multiple times if you are even leaving your room grab something that needs to be put away with you this rule is not only going to help declutter your house it's just going to feel more organized and inviting and when you are in a calm clean collective space i feel like you are just mentally just whoa there is a bird Hello, it's a petting zoo in here. He's huge. He's like this high. Yeah, he's low. Oh, there's two. There's two. Oh, is this mad? They're gonna come in the house. Matt, if they come in the house. Oh, I'm scared. Do we have to close the door, Cashew? After a slight detour of checking out the birds, we're gonna hop right back in. So as you're going throughout your day, I want you to think about the things that you are putting down in the wrong spot. Just put it in the right spot and then you don't have to deal with it later. So try it, your house will be cleaner, decluttered. You'll have a more inviting space and you'll actually feel better in that space. Okay, so as you're winding down to maybe you get ready for bed or just like you put the kids down, I want you to pick a time of the night that you are going to commit yourself to putting your phone on airplane mode. I like to do usually anywhere from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Once I'm like, you know, just kind of trying to wind down and get off social media and the internet, I will put my phone on airplane mode. Anytime after that, you are just like asking for poor sleep, just overtiredness, and it's just, it's not a good situation. Pick a time, put your phone on airplane mode, and I'm telling you, you feel just more free. It is the best feeling ever. It doesn't mean that you can't watch Netflix or watch YouTube. It just means you're not online talking to everyone, seeing what everyone's up to. I just don't think it's the best thing to be looking at, especially right before you hit the sheets. So I want you to pick a time, commit to it, and do it for even a day or a couple of days. See how you feel, and it's now a part of my every single night routine, and I just love it. It's a little break I get, and I don't put it back on until like eight in the morning, usually an hour after I wake up. And it is just the most freeing feeling because we don't need to be connected to the internet at all times. Speaking of your nighttime routine, I want you to try and read for 10 minutes every single night before you actually close your eyes. So maybe when you're done getting ready and washed up for the night, you're done your Netflix, you're done all those things, I want you just to lay in your bed, put a timer on, or even just commit to a certain amount of like pages and read something that is fictional. So that is just something that you don't need to be learning. It's not a business book. It's not a self-care how-to thing. It's just pure fun brain entertainment. And I have been reading a lot of fun like rom-com chick flick books and i find it the best way to end my night and also i find when you read at night it makes you naturally sleepier so if you have trouble sleeping try just reading a book pages not on an e-reader or screen just pages and i feel like it just puts you right to bed and also you have like a fun little story to like end your night with now when you wake up the next day i want you to make your bed 
Your parents have been telling you, telling us all since we were young and little, that making your bed is what you need to do when you wake up and get out of it. And honestly, it makes such a big difference. There is like proven evidence and scientific facts about people who make their bed are more productive. It is something like subconsciously that like you have checked off and accomplished for the day and it's easy. Everyone knows how to make a bed and you don't have to make it perfect, but it just needs to be made. So before you leave your room, your bedroom to go downstairs, make breakfast, go to the bathroom, Room, take two minutes it probably takes 30 seconds actually make your bed and that way when you walk back into your room you're gonna be like wow my life is put together like literally my bed is put together I feel way more productive and ready to accomplish the day it, it just it does something and it makes such a big difference get some fresh air every single day whether it's opening a window going for a walk stepping out outside if you have a backyard if you don't have a backyard your front yard get outside get that fresh air on your face in your lungs on your skin i just feel like it is not normal for us to be inside all the time and i know most people have been spending way more time indoors lately and if you live in a colder climate you're probably indoors even more but i want you just to if it's a nice sunny day open the windows for a little bit go for a little 15 minute walk and at the very least, just step outside. I know so many people that will go through their entire day with not even stepping outside. Chloe, I'm looking at you. And this is your reminder to every single day, look up at the sky, breathe in fresh air, and get that fresh air on your body, in your body, just do it. Hey, guess what? I finally revealed what my secret project that I've been working so, so hard on on the last few months it is da, 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 the Baby Health Nut ebook. It is officially launching February 15th. And what's really cool is if you pre order right now, up until the launch date, you will get an early bird discount price of 20% off. Plus, you're gonna also get a free bonus recipe of my mommy milk smoothie. Whether you're breastfeeding or not, it's just a delicious, nourishing breakfast smoothie that honestly will fuel you and make you ready to take on the day. I am so excited about this passion project. It's finally come to life and you guys are gonna get your hands on it February 15th. Click the link down below to be the first to know when it's launched, pre-order, get the early bird specials, and I can't wait for you guys to dig right in. Tongue scraping. You've heard me say it before. If you have no idea what it is, there are little gadgets that are basically like a little rounded, I don't know, triangle top and you literally just take it and scrape the gunk off your tongue. There are different times of the day that they say it's good to do it. Some say first thing in the morning before you brush your teeth or do anything or eat anything. Um, I personally, I like to do it then, but I also love to do it at the end of the night after I brush my teeth and everything. There's always stuff left over on your tongue and it sounds gross and I just don't want it hanging around there. So I do two scrapes and the stuff that comes off is disgusting and I'm just so happy that I'm able to remove it from my mouth. It helps freshen your breath. It helps remove bacteria and it just makes your mouth feel so much cleaner. So I honestly, I've had mine for so long. So just invest once in a tongue scraper. I like to get ones that are metal so you can throw it in the dishwasher. They're more sanitary and you can just use it again and again and again. And once you start, you're gonna be addicted to tongue scraping, trust me. So as I mentioned, a lot of these tips are just layering on top of things that you're already doing, like flossing your teeth. If you're not flossing, you need to because that is like the number one way you're gonna get cavities and the stuff that gets stuck in your teeth is disgusting. Days I don't floss and then I do floss, I'm like, whoa, that like, it needs to be a daily habit, if not twice. So what I want you to do when you're flossing is just to take a little bit of coconut oil, rub it along your floss, and then floss your teeth. Coconut oil is so good for oral hygiene. It helps whiten and freshen. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial, microbial, I don't know, all these benefits. Coconut oil is just an all around amazing product and I usually have one in my bathroom and one in my kitchen. You definitely want to separate them, but even better if you can do a little mixture with your coconut oil with some essential oils and infuse it. Oils like tea tree, clove, peppermint are so good for oral care. And if you want an even quicker way to do it, you guys can just pick up my Beauty Nut Skincare Oil Mouthwash. I'll put a photo of it here. It's a product that you use for oil pulling, which is a whole other thing, but it is already infused coconut oil with all the amazing essential oils that are good for oral care already in there. So you can just literally take that. That's what I do. I put that on my floss, I floss and it just freshens your breath. I swear it helps 
make my teeth whiter and I just, I love it. And it's an easy thing to do with something you're already doing every single day. You guys know I love my morning green smoothies, but what you can do just to help your body digest it a little bit better and reduce bloating if you find you tend to blow when you eat a lot of raw veggies, like in a smoothie or in a salad, you can actually chew your smoothie. It sounds weird, but next time you take a sip of your smoothie, I want you to swish it around in your mouth and pretend like you're actually chewing it. This is gonna help activate your digestive juices in your mouth which is the start of your digestive tract. And that is gonna signal to your body that we are actually breaking down some food because a lot of times when you're drinking something, your body can produce less of those digestive enzymes and acids and stuff to help break down that food. So try it, chew your smoothie and see how you feel afterwards. When you're getting ready for the day, I want you to pick a podcast that is something uplifting and motivating and something that just makes you feel good. There's so many times in our day, maybe we're cooking, meal prepping for the week or getting ready for the day that we just have some quiet time where maybe we're just listening to music or watching a YouTube video, but we could actually be consuming content that is gonna make us feel happier as a person, improve our life in some way, shape or form. And there are so many motivating podcasts and ones that are just like a good feel good, self-care ones. I will link some of my favorites in the blog post, but I just find it is a great time to just throw one of those on, playing in the background, and just kind of play that while you're getting ready for the day. And I'll just a lot of times keep pausing a podcast and I'll finish it after a couple of days if I actually have time to get my hair and makeup done. <laughs> Add boosters to your morning drink, whether you drink coffee, herbal coffee, tea, water, whatever it is, I want you to think about something that you could add to it just to help boost the nutritional value of it. So with my herbal coffee, I love to add in a scoop of collagen, a little cinnamon in there, and those are just fun ways to boost my coffee. Cinnamon, although it's just a spice, it also is anti-inflammatory. It also helps balance your blood sugar, and it's also delicious. And the collagen just melts right in, you can't even tell it's there. So you could even add MCT oil. I know a lot of people do that for coffee. So there's lots of like little things that you can add to your morning drink just to give it a little more boost of energy or nutrients or whatever you're craving that day. I want you to add something green to every single meal. Even if it's brownies, you can add some spinach into brownies, you won't even know it's there. So whether it's your smoothie, add a handful of greens. It's a pasta, wilt in some greens in there right before it's done cooking. You can add it to casseroles, soups, stews, um, really anything and everything. You can add greens into, and it doesn't have to be leafy greens. It could be broccoli, asparagus, there are so many green vegetables out there, so pick a few of your favorites, rotate between them, and find some fun and unique ways to add them into every single meal. You can even add greens to pancakes. There's a green smoothie pancake recipe in my cookbook, and they honestly taste delicious. You would never know they're in there. All right, this is something I have thought a lot about over the years, and it is to just be mindful of your the vocabulary that you're using. And if there are specific words that you're using a lot of and you find you don't really connect with them or they just have a negative kind of tone to them, maybe try to switch it out with something else or just take it out altogether. So words for me that I feel like I use a lot and I don't like that I use them are just, like I'm just gonna do this. I'm just, I don't know, I just want to ask. It makes you feel like you're unsure or insecure or I don't know, I just, I find, <laughs> I just, I just find, I say it a lot actually when it comes to just my mom life. Uh, say I'm handing Sage over to her dad and I'll be like, I'm just gonna take a shower. I'm just gonna do this as if I'm trying to justify the action that I wanna go do. Like, just go take a shower. No, go take a shower. It's not just. And I find I'm just being more mindful of that word. And I, there's definitely a few other ones like busy. I used to say busy all the time. I find it's a negative word. I'd always say like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. We're all busy and busy isn't always a negative thing. It's good to have things to do and be productive and feel good and feel accomplished and successful. And I find the word busy can mean just like a negative thing, like you're too busy for life. The other word that, I mean, it's a Canadian thing and we say it too much, it's, you guessed it, sorry. I, I feel like I used to have a really bad habit of saying it all the time on emails. If I was late replying to something, I would say, sorry for my late response. The reason why I'm late is because I am busy with the business that someone is trying to maybe connect with me with. So like, why am I sorry? Because you know, my business is growing or I'm doing what I love or I'm spending time with my kid. Like I shouldn't feel sorry. So instead I say, 
thank you for your patience while I get back to your email. I just switch it around and there's just something that happens when you just switch a word or completely take one out with something more positive. It really does make a difference. So think about maybe three words that you're using a lot in your day to day life that you just don't really love and like, let's cut them. We don't need them. You've heard it before, wake up and go to bed at the same time every single day. Even if it's like off by like half an hour or something, your body just does so good when it just has its natural like clock and you don't have to rely on a alarm clock. Like I don't even, I mean, my alarm clock is my daughter Sage. Try going to bed and waking up at the same time every single day, regardless if it's a weekday or weekend. I know we can get into these habits where we wake up super early during the week and then we sleep in on the weekend and it just kind of like messes up our routine. And what's really great is when you do create a routine with your body by, you know, going to bed and waking up at the same time, your body just like naturally kind of follows that rhythm them and it'll just kind of wake up without an alarm clock. It's really fascinating when you get into the habit of it. So whether it's a weekend, I mean, Sage wakes us up at 7.30 a.m. every day. So um, I can really say from being forced to follow a specific routine, it really has made a difference and I really like it. I feel like I have just a better structure of my day. I feel more rested and I just, yeah, I highly recommend it. This is a big one I've done years ago and it has changed my life and I'm not being dramatic. It is to turn off your phone notifications, email, Instagram, Facebook, anything else that's pinging you all day, turn it off. The only one I have on is text messages and because usually people that have my phone number are messaging me because they're friends or family members. Uh, work and stuff is usually email or you know, very few work people I feel like know my personal number but it just makes such a big difference. When you aren't getting pinged at all day to do things, it just, it means that you have to physically go into your email, be mentally prepared that you're checking emails instead of just getting bombarded all day. I made this switch probably like a good four years ago and it changed my life. I felt so stressed every time I heard ping, ping, ping on my phone. And it just, it honestly caused me anxiety, just that noise. So I thought I'm gonna take it off and I choose when I go to check my emails. It's not constantly telling me when one is coming in and it just has made the biggest difference. So if you're still getting notifications, go to your phone settings and turn them off. Like you will just breathe better. Whether or not you have made a vision board for the new year, I want you to either make one or put a couple of images on the desktop wallpaper of your laptop or computer. I actually just made mine in Canva. It's an online editing photo software that you can just like make graphics and stuff like that, but they actually have a template for a desktop background and it's perfect. You can just drop in your photos. It, I honestly created mine within an hour and it's so easy to do and create a vision board. And then I dropped in some text that says 2022 and I uploaded that to my computer as my wallpaper. And every time I go on my laptop, I see it. I see images that just make me feel good, inspire me, remind me of my goals. And if you want me to actually do a little like Instagram reel on how I made it, I can definitely do that. Leave me a comment down below. Um, but it was a fun little project that we did. And I just, I love that it's a reminder. So whether it's like a bunch of photos or just like one photo, put something somewhere like your computer where you're gonna see it every single day and feel inspired and reminded of what you are working towards. Okay, this is one I kind of thought about since you know we have a one-year-old, I know other parents can relate. You're going through your day just trying to survive or just like keep your child alive and get through the next 24 hours and you often forget about your partner. The person that you need to lean on, you need support, you know, your life partner, whatever it is, I feel like we forget how special this person is and you can honestly go throughout the day with like sometimes not even like giving each other much affection. You're just like, unless it's like date night or, or just like the baby's asleep, I find that sometimes you just need like little small habits throughout the day to remind you of, you know, that they're there. And like, I find a nice little habit to do is making sure you give your partner or loved one a morning kiss and a nighttime kiss. So every time you start your day, give each other a little kiss. And before you go to bed, give each other a little kiss or a hug, whatever you feel like doing, but just being like, hello, hi, you're here, I'm here. Like, let's, Let's give each other some love. I don't know, whatever it is, I just think these little small habits of affection can go a long way. Dun, 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 dun. The last one is to not carry your phone around the house with you. I know it's tempting to just stick it in the back pocket and then just like have it ready to go. If you have to check a text message, scroll through Instagram, TikTok, whatever. 
but I find it just makes us available all the time. And also it just makes us less present. If I'm playing with Sage and my phone is right there, or I'm breastfeeding, you're more likely, you're probably like a hundred times more likely to be on your phone if it's like attached to your body. And so I think it's really important to, when you walk inside the house, you know, whether you take it out of your purse or whatever, you like set it down somewhere, you can still hear it if it rings or you get a message, hopefully your notifications are turned off, um, but it, it's not right on you. So if you're going to the bathroom, it's not there. If you're getting a snack, it's not there. Think about how many things you do in a day that your phone is like a part of it. And it is just really refreshing to have that, like it's a healthy separation, you know? So have a spot for your phone, whether it's charging or whatever, and that way you can just like go about your day and not have a phone on you. Think about back in the day, you had a house phone, it was in one spot. Our house phone is now attached to us all the time and I just think it can just feel overwhelming. All right, there you have it, 22 tiny, tiny daily healthy habits that you can do every single day. And honestly, I think they're gonna change your life. Pick a few of them. I want you to list three down below that you are going to try and implement this week and let me know how you feel. You can chat with me on Instagram. I post there every single day. If you aren't already subscribed to this channel, click that button down below, join the HealthNet fam. As I mentioned, I'm gonna have a full blog post linked down below for you guys to check out with all the links and products and resources I mentioned in today's video. So definitely check that out. And thank you again for watching. I will see you guys in my next video and have a fabulous day. Bye guys.